I regret to inform you that my status of growth as a biological organism has transcended the status of an adolescent. Henceforth, including but not limited to older children, present your auditory oculi towards the sound waves emanating from my location immediately. I shall now present your orders in the form of monologue. Reconnoiter the area located in proximity to our home and acquire a small hand-sized blossom, returning such a naturally forming object to our home forthwith. With begrudging frustration, I accept. My concerns regarding this organism which is related to myself by blood, increases on a daily basis. The cause of my concern is due to said organism's earlier request for respect as due for a carbon-based life form far later in its life cycle, rather than an infantile adolescent. The said life form is currently situated at a set of four roads which intersect, forming the shape of a cross and allowing an individual to traverse in any of the said four directions. I have informed her personally using my capacity for speech as is standard for all beings of the human condition, information regarding the individuals of commendable qualities who, utilizing their abilities, and at great risk to their own persons, protected the plane of existence and planet known as Earth on multiple occasions. The reasoning behind this decision was to give the organism bivouayu which is related to myself by blood, if even for a fleeting moment, a feeling of expectation and positive desire for a certain outcome to occur. Regretfully, I am currently experiencing an uncomfortable sensation which is caused by an imminent threat of danger or damage to my person due to the fact that this organism will likely, in the near future, be forced through physical or psychological means, to choose between two or more options that, when selected, will affect the remainder of the being's life cycle. Excuse me, forsooth, I must inquire about the current trajectory of your heading. I can report that, at this current time, my trajectory is to nowhere. I would request that you remove your persons from my presence immediately. Your earlier statement of nowhere was in fact correct. Of this I can confirm. Following this revelation, I would have you accompany me to this position, a few paces to my rear. I would request you utilize your oculatory senses and take in the object upon which is the center of our attentions. Forsooth. I urge you to take in the object which I shall only refer to as a thing. Thus forth, take my blunt weapon and deliver unto it justice and punishment for its crimes. The nature of these crimes I shall neglect to mention. I am unsure of the current course of action. Unfortunately, it is of the highest necessity that I leave your presence at the earliest convenience. I bid you farewell. I urge you to reconsider at the risk of violence and or aggression to your person. To console you, allow me to compare the object you see before you to a small metal canister with an attached handle, typically used for transporting water and other liquids over short distances. This metal canister is also filled with smaller metal entities which, when affixed to sufficiently sized fittings, can be utilized by way of attaching certain objects to others. Allow me to reaffirm my purpose, which unfortunately coincides with the task you have laid out for me. It is my duty to report directly to the location where upon currency is exchanged for various goods, or risk incurring the wrath of my maternal figure. I say. I have estimated that if the equation you have spoken of is true, that it will be difficult if not impossible to exchange currency for goods if the currency in your possession was to be transferred to another party. The time has come for us to depart the vicinity. Please embark upon this machine that is designed to transport goods and or individuals across significant distances. Forsooth. Forsooth. I am expressing frustration at the transferal of my currency to the possession of those unpleasant gentlemen.
I have been dispatched by an unknown foe, and seek assistance of any nature, albeit preferably medical. I beseech you, unknown foe, to grant me mercy on this unfortunate night. Excuse me. Suspicious percussions have traveled through the air, reaching my drums at approximately 343 meters per second. My orders are as follows, both of you investigate said suspicious percussions, and report your findings with due haste to the most senior gentleman in proximity, which happens to be myself. Comrade, you appear to have fallen victim to a force which acts upon all objects on the planet in an unavoidable manner, causing you to fall headlong onto the concrete surface we call ground. Allow me to administer assistance by way of a counterweight, enabling you to ascend back to your natural position as a bipedal life form. I am in excruciating pain. It would appear that my body has come into contact with electrical energy exceeding the limit that the human body is able to withstand. In light of the recent dispatching of our comrade, I must inquire the degree of knowledge you have regarding our mysterious assailant. More precisely, it is of my interest at the current moment as to whether either of your oculatory senses picked up or detected any anomalies in the recent moments. Anomalies that may shed light on the nature of our unseen enemy. I humbly request that the individual or individuals currently in the process of dispatching my comrades by means of stealth, subterfuge and a sensation of fear reveal him or herself to myself and those joined with me immediately. I have deemed that the period of recreation has reached its end. I demand that the hostile element lurking within these very shadows emerge and engage us so that we may deal with this issue in a gentlemanly manner free from foul play. Good evening my esteemed colleagues, I can at this point affirm that your earlier requests for my presence have been noted by myself, however, it is with great regret that I announce that I cannot acquiesce to your demands due to your ungentlemanly conduct as part of a criminal organization operating in and around these city streets, in addition, my own character as a ruthless and merciless vigilante demands that, on my quest for justice, you all fall victim, prepare for fisticuffs. It would appear that your own strength outmatches our own by a vast margin. I yield to your power and request clemency. Your request has been declined. Attention to all it may concern, by sounding this high-pitched noise formed by the passing of air through my mouth to create vibration, I summon you to appear and assist your fellow comrades in dealing with this extreme threat. Attention nearby hostile personnel, my enhanced visual senses attributed to me by my cybernetic augmentations have resulted in you being detected and placed in the direct path of the high-powered automatic and rocket-based weapons currently within my possession. Your meddlesome behavior has reached its end of this violence is as follows. The streets wear up on you once called home, the place in which you carried out the majority of your criminal activities, is now unsafe for you to do so. The reason for this is that my presence can and will prevent any unlawful, and ungentlemanly conduct in the vicinity. Now I shall administer this flaming object designed to be physically attacked wear up on it will dispense sugary treats. I say. Hark. The individual who has dispatched these thugs with these now trains his gaze to me. I must retreat with all due haste. I beseech you, embark onto our vehicle designed for the transportation of goods and individuals before the hostile force, who has beset itself upon us reacts with unbridled fury. It has become apparent that you have made an error in judgment, the error being that your punishment is not yet complete. Ah? A small explosive fragmentation device has landed at my feet. Fear has gripped my person at the prospect of my inevitable death. 
I pray for assistance from any unknown force within the next few seconds to save me from my impending fate. Your act of bravery has saved my life. Your status, however, as a ruthless and dangerous vigilante contradicts this act leading me to query the reason, nature, or origin of the impulse that caused you to undertake such a selfless act. Performing an act repeatedly makes it difficult for an individual to not perform those acts in the future. Due to the nature of these streets that are filled with violence and individuals willing to do harm, I advise that you, Adolescent. Travel at a brisk pace that is quicker than walking, and yet slower than sprinting to the building of your own domicile in order to avoid the aforementioned threats. It is my understanding that you are grouped within the subcategory of individuals of commendable qualities. Is this not correct? The aforementioned distinction of an individual of commendable quality does not reconcile with my existence. I am afraid I cannot categorize myself as one. Your previous statement, in my view, is incorrect. The feats you have accomplished before me very well enable one to categorize you as an extremely pleasant gentleman and thus I disagree with the utterance which preceded my own. The time of your arrival exceeds that of the agreed point. Your absence following this moment in time has given me cause to feel a sensation of anxiety, stress and trouble over possible problems which you may or may not have faced in the preceding hours. I recognize my arrival as being beyond that of the agreed upon hour, and wish to tender my regretful acknowledgement of my mistake. However, I will now inform you of the unbelievable events that have taken place during the preceding hours where the sun set causing darkness to set upon the planet. The first part of this tale begins with you dispatching me to exchange my currency for items from a nearby location in which goods can be exchanged for said currency. Unfortunately, my journey was interrupted by a gang of unpleasant gentlemen whose gang symbols resonates with the rigid structure which resides in every human being that is comprised of bones. Members of this criminal organization then proceeded to... I wish to draw your attention to certain moments when my offspring's features form into an expression of amusement or kindness whereupon the edges of the mouth are pulled upwards. In addition to this, her eyes also become affected by the sensation of positive expectation, or indeed a general feeling of optimism towards a specific series of events. It is possible that my feeling of anxiety, stress and trouble over possible problems that my offspring may or may not have faced is indeed unwarranted. Despite the fact that my primary goal, which is the pursuit and destruction of the criminal gang that names itself after the Spanish translation of a being whose life force is no longer in existence, I can rest with this secondary task being upheld. My status as an individual of commendable quality is thus maintained. I bid you good evening.